change. Wonderful change has come over me. A wonderful change has come Sunday coming to not that we haven't been sown into but allowing our pastor to rest and when pastors rested it lifts us in our spirit amen amen and we thank God for all of those who have preceded me today we started out with mother Ruth Merritt amen amen slid in from South Carolina, amen, to tell us what thus says the Lord, amen. We had Pastor Keith, beat, beat, affectionately, Richardson, son of this ministry who came, amen, and blessed us. And we had Pastor Lionel Wilson to come in from Locust Grove, Georgia, amen, to bless us. And then we had none other than Pastor Frankie Williams who came and blessed us last week. And last week was such a blessing to Pastor and myself, amen. I usually, on the appreciation, I try not to say a whole lot, so that's why I didn't get up. I got some eyes from Allison, but I kind of let Pastor T have that time, amen. And I said I'll explain it to her a little later, amen. But I kind of let him have that time because really uh, it's not that I don't, labor along with him but I'm not the pastor so I understand that there are some things that he experiences that I don't experience so when we actually put our energy into Pastor T for an appreciation is really all that he that, that makes him up all that it takes for him to do what God has called him to do and I'm the support in that not just him as pastor, but in every area of his life. So I always yield because he's my pastor too. Amen? So as much as you love him, I love him. Amen? That much more. Amen? Because I know him. Amen? But what God has put in him to do, God knows what he's doing with that. Amen? I don't try to mirror it. I just be in place to do what God has sent me to do. Amen? Amen. But we're going to go forward. Amen. And we're going to and thank, for, thank God for everything that's preceded me. Amen. Minister Hubbard, another dynamic job always because you love God. You love God. You ready to praise God and you love him because you know what he has been to you. So I want to take this opportunity. Amen. Just to, to, to thank everyone for all that they've done and sown into us and how you do it all the time. Amen. It is a blessing to us, and we don't take it lightly because we realize some may not have or feel that appreciation that we feel. So we thank God for that. Amen. I'm going to tell you what thus says the Lord, and we're going to slide on out of here. Amen. 
Amen. If you came to hear a word from the Lord, don't look at me like I just offended you. Amen. Don't look at me like you don't know the Lord. Amen. You're not here because of me. You're not here. I didn't get you here. Amen. I can't keep you breathing. It's not me. It's the Lord. Amen. So I just encourage you to, to open your Bibles if you have it. We're going to be in Habakkuk if you have it. Amen. If not, it will be posted on the screen. Amen. And I'm going to give you just the, the I'm going to talk about Habakkuk, but I'm going to give you the key text, and then we're going to move right into the message. Amen. Habakkuk chapter 4. I'm sorry, chapter 2. Amen. The B clause is going to be the key verse but I'm, of 4, but I'm going to read the entire verse of 4. Amen. Habakkuk chapter 2 and verse 4. Amen. It says, Behold the proud. His soul is not upright in him, but the just live by faith. You may take your seats. God bless the reading of the word. Amen. We're going to talk about Habakkuk in its entirety. Amen. That's just a little snippet, amen, of what the topic will be. And the topic will be the just shall live by faith. But you've got to take the whole book of Habakkuk to kind of understand where I'm going. Amen? Amen? So don't just take that little bit and just ride on that little bit. We're going to talk more about Habakkuk. I know maybe that's not a common uh, chapter, a common book, excuse me, in the Bible, but it is one that is important. Habakkuk was, was a prophet. Amen? We don't know where he came from. We don't know who his mom and daddy was. Amen? We don't know. And you know, in names, when people talk about others, especially in the scriptures, we find that the father's name carries something. Amen? But no one knew his father's name. And I found um, that sometimes when people don't really know where you hail from, they can be a little cautious in dealing with you. Because even when you hear a name, if it's your name, if I hear the name Rebecca Hubbard, if I hear that name, I have a feeling I have thoughts. I have impressions when I hear that name. When I hear the name Rebecca Hubbard, I think about love and prayer and faith and encouragement. When I think about Rebecca Hubbard, that's when I think about Rebecca Hubbard. Amen. So whatever name you hear, it's going to give you a feeling, an impression, or something that's going to begin you in the thought process of who this person is that may be presented to you or this person that is speaking to you. Amen. But we don't have that pleasure when we hear about Habakkuk. Habakkuk, amen, came upon the scene in the midst of uh, Babylon and Judah. Babylon and Judah were disobedient nations, amen. Judah being the one, amen, that God was going to pronounce judgment or had pronounced judgment upon. And Habakkuk was the person who God had in place to pray who God had in place to watch and to look, amen? And, and, and Habakkuk became a little upset because he could not understand, God, why are you allowing me to see all these things? Why are you allowing me to watch this disobedience? Why are you allowing me to look at these things when people are not doing what they're supposed to do? They're evil. Why are you having me to see all this and I can't do anything about it? I don't know how to fix it. I can talk to you, God, but I don't know how to fix this and I'm having to look at it all the time. Anybody been in a situation where you know it's not going right, they're not doing right, but you're having to look at it and you don't know what to do and you can grow frustrated. You can grow frustrated if you're not careful. And in his frustration, he began to talk to God. And sometimes I thought about, when I read this, Pastor T, I thought about sometimes I see some things and I'll say, Pastor, did you see this? Did you see that? Did you see this? He'll just kind of nod. And I'm thinking, he's not looking. He's not paying attention. But then when he begins to speak to me the way God spoke to Habakkuk, in this scripture, when God responded to Habakkuk's prayer, he gave him more detail about the situation and the people that he could ever see. So sometimes when I share stuff with Pastor T, he gives me more detail about situations. I'm just hearing it or I'm just seeing it, but Pastor T saw it way back there. 
And he'll say, well, I, yeah, uh-huh, I've been praying about that. Yeah, uh-huh, uh-huh. He doesn't really give me everything about it because that's between him and God and whatever God has him doing. In the life of the person that he allowed him to look into, he knows that God is going to deal with him on that. But sometimes we think because pastor's not quick to react sometimes or he's not saying everything that he sees because he's not trying to build a platform. He's not trying to build press or fame. Amen. He knows how to use wisdom. Wisdom is you ain't got to run out there and, and try to use your gift every time you see something. Oh, let me see what God's telling me about you. No, you can see a lot of things. You're talking a lot, but you're not praying. Amen. Pastor T's looking and praying Amen. because prayer brings about the change. Prayer brings about a difference. You running your mouth all the time is not always bringing about a difference because it's not about the person you're speaking to. You're trying to look important to other people, amen, and look like you're deep, but hallelujah, but God wants people changed. So sometimes we think Pastor T is not paying attention. No, Pastor T is showing us the way we're supposed to go. Because every time God speaks to him, he don't run out to talk about it. He don't run out trying to find somebody to share it with. He goes to God in prayer because God is the one that spoke to him. And he says, God, you showed it to me. How am I supposed to help them? How am I supposed to make a difference? Because you didn't show it to me just to be showing it to me. There's something you want me to do to help that other person. So Habakkuk seeing all these things, he's, he's watching all this evil, and he's saying, God, when are you going to do something about it? When are you going to fix it? I know sometimes we look around in our neighborhoods, and we look around at the country, and we look around at all these things, and all these things that are evil are in the world. God didn't create an evil world. We need to stop saying this evil, old evil world. God didn't create an evil world. Everything God created was good and very good. Now, what we did after we got in here was on us, but what God did was good and very good. So I don't practice that. The Lord showed me that. No, 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 no. The world is not evil. You can sit in a pasture by yourself sitting there. What's evil about that? It's what's going on on the, on the earth that makes a difference in your life. Amen. So as we continue to look at this and Habakkuk is talking and speaking to God and God is, 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 is telling him what he needs to do, just, just remain in faith. Basically, it's what God is saying to him. And he says, well, I understand that God, and he prays again. And Habakkuk was one that didn't mind waiting to hear from God. Okay, God, I, I, I prayed, I asked, I'm going to wait to hear what you're going to say. He didn't just pray and get up and run, but he went and sat down and waited to hear what God had to say. Sometimes when we tell people, I prayed about it, you did, you talked, but what did God say to you? And it's interesting when I ask the question, I get no response. Because you didn't hear God. You just talked about what you wanted to talk about, and then I prayed about it. You dumped it on him and took off running. You didn't hear anything but your voice. So when Habakkuk was praying to God about this, he said, now God, I know you're a good God. I know you're a just God. But God, you have allowed these people that are evil, talking about Judah, these people that are evil, to, now they have judgment upon them. And you're sending judgment upon them from the Babylonians? who are more evil than Judah, whose horses are swifter, whose weapons are more effective, whose ways are worse. You, I'm trying to understand how is justice going to work because you are just God and you're a good God. How is justice going to work when you're going to send someone more evil to bring judgment on the evil. I'm not understanding that. I don't know that of you, God. I'm trying to understand. Amen? How, does, how is it that sometimes we see people who are not doing right or wicked seemingly prospering in what they're doing? How is it that things kind of sliding along for them, but you're struggling? 
You're going to church, you're working hard, you're trying to do the things that you're supposed to do, but somehow it seems like you're having a harder time than they are. They seem to be fine in their folly. They seem to be fine shacking up. They seem to be fine selling and dealing on the corner. They seem to be fine. Nothing bothering them. How is that? I didn't do any of that, God. So how is it that I'm hurting and going through so much? How is it that, that it seems? Seems is the key word. As if the wicked are prospering. Hallelujah. If we're not careful, I'm going to plug this in. If we're not careful when we are questioning God, when we are questioning his ways, we'll find out, amen, that continuing to question him can lead to doubting him. No matter what's going on in your life, don't get to the point where you talk yourself out of believing the word of God because what you see around you it's not what you think is righteous and just. Because God does not follow our direction. His ways are not our ways. His thoughts are not our thoughts. So we, we don't understand them. Who can understand the mind of God and what he's doing? Amen. Even when you don't understand God's plan, you must trust God. Every move God makes is the right move. Every move he makes is the right move. When we doubt the actions, we really doubt the person. If I begin to question something you're doing, and I keep questioning things that you're doing, and I continue to look and pick to find problems or issues with whatever it is that you're doing, what's really happening is the person that's being looked upon is being doubted. Amen? So if we can do that to a person, you know we're doing it to God. Amen? When we have doubts about why God's doing something, we put ourselves in danger of doubting who God is. No matter what's going on in your life, never doubt who God is. Amen? So as Habakkuk is questioning and Habakkuk is checking, trying to see and gain understanding of what God is doing, amen, and I'm just moving through. I'm not calling out scripture. I'm going through. When you go back and look at the short book of Habakkuk, you're going to find how he prayed and God responded, how he prayed about the wicked and God responded, how he wondered why God was doing what he was doing, and God responded. And God gave him, once he gave him in his first response, the description of the people that he thought he had observed and knew all about, what they had going on, and God could give a more detail because he cre created all of us. There's nothing going on in your life he doesn't know. He know your, knew your thoughts before you even thought. Him. He knew where you were going to be, what you were going to do, what you would receive from him, and what you would not. It's amazing how we can sit beside someone Holy Ghost filled and not get a thing out of church or serving God. It is important to be in the company of people who have faith. It does something to you, but you can make up your mind to not do anything. If it doesn't suit you, you can make up your mind. But if God's got a plan for you, you can bear down as hard as you want or the Holy Ghost can wreck your whole life. So we got to understand we're no match for God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Even in verse number two, amen, of Habakkuk, in the B clause, amen, of verse one, he tells Habakkuk, write the vision and make it plain on the tablets that he may run who reads it, who receives what he is doing, who receives the words that God has given him to speak, who receives what God is doing without worrying about it, without looking around because sometimes you got to have something you can lay your eyes on. You got to have a focus point. Because if you left to your own devices, your mind will be everywhere. Your actions will be everywhere. You will blow every witness you ever built your whole life to have because you got off track. Amen? Amen. 
He says, write the vision, make it plain. He continues that he may run who reads it. Verse 3, for the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end it will speak and it will not lie. Though it tarries, wait for it. Because it will surely come, it will not tarry. Sometimes we think God is not quick enough to do some stuff. Habakkuk's wondering, why am I sitting here watching this? I don't even want to look at it. I'm tired trying to tell them, trying to make a difference in their life. It's not working. And now, God, you've allowed these people that are more wicked than the ones that need the judgment, Judah. Now you're sending the Babylonians, the Chaldeans, in, and they're worse then the people getting judgment. How is that going to be a good witness for you, God? Amen? Amen. And as we keep moving, and God is, 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 is ta- it's amazing, the love and care, because we're taught not to question. We're taught, to, don't get beside yourself now and go questioning God's ways and what God is doing. But Habakkuk did it in a way that God knew, because sometimes where, we, where, our, where our questions are coming from is not right. The intents of the heart, what we're really, what we're really after, God knows it's not right. So we don't get the best results all the time because it's our intention, not the way you put your words, not how you hail your face, not how you clapped your hand, but it's the intent of the heart that God is looking at. And Habakkuk's intent of the heart was correct, and God answered him. God took time to talk to him, yet He only gave him so much. He only gave him so much, amen, because he's God. And as we keep on moving through this scripture, amen, we're going to go all the way because I've talked about the book of Habakkuk. We're going to head all the way to the end of this book, to verse 18. We're going to head to the end of this book, to verse 18. Chapter 3, verse 18. And it says, yet I will rejoice in the Lord. Now, Habakkuk didn't get everything that he wanted. God talked to him. God shared with him. God, you know, told him enough for him to be faithful to him. But he didn't get everything. He wanted, sometimes we want the whole story. We want to know everything. Before I move, God, I need you to tell me what I, what everything you want me to do. Before I move, God, I need you to explain it to me because I just don't understand what you're doing. You don't have to understand what God is doing if that were necessary it would be a whole lot of things that we wouldn't get because everybody's questioning what God is doing what you're doing we don't have he doesn't have to answer to us in verse 18 yet I will rejoice in the Lord I will joy in the God of my salvation verse 18 the Lord God is my strength He will make my feet like deer's feet or hind's feet. And I will make him walk on my high mountains. I asked them to put up a picture because I wanted you to see what God showed me when when he didn't give me everything about the message. He just keeps showing me this in my spirit and I found it I found it now what we see is it's like a deer creature it's an ibex it's like a deer creature like a deer and they're able to scale and climb mountains and dams you know the dams that back up the water their hind feet are equipped to grip and to handle the high places, the small things, the dangerous climate. They're able to handle the things that come up in the midst of their climbing. And if you could see all the way down there, I don't know if anyone's ever been to a dam before. I've been to Hoover Dam, and I don't know about you. When I look down, I can't imagine what would happen if something were to fall. So my mind was on the flat ground of the dam going across when I was walking. I would never in my mind imagine that I would do anything like that. 
But these animals who do not speak English, these animals who do not have freezers, these animals who do not have the word of God to go by and to study, these animals who don't know how to say, Abba, Father, I need your help. These animals, amen, who don't know the things that we do, don't have all the things that we have, don't know all this stuff. They've got enough to step out and walk out in this condition. But for some of us, if I don't have the right shoes, if I can't get the right job, if I can't get the right house, if, I, if, if they don't call me out so I can give a word, if they don't do this, if people don't do that, I can't function. But these animals who are in treacherous ground, to me, looking at it, it's a death sentence. To me, looking at it, but my spiritual eye, when I look at it, Pastor T, is that sometimes we don't think enough of ourselves. We don't realize when God created us, he gave us everything that we need. We don't realize that even though things happen and times come that can bring a lot of tears and times come that can be hard to maneuver, we think we're not equipped to handle the things that we have to handle when they come our way. But I'm here to tell you, amen, I don't know who told them that they were equipped to go out on, in those kind of conditions, but I believe that if God has equipped them to go into dangerous places, if God has equipped them to go into high places, if God has equipped them to go into places you don't know how they're walking, but they're walking on it, then I know that my God has equipped us to take care of and to overcome and to handle anything that comes our way. God wouldn't put anything on us that we couldn't handle. And even though you may think you're not able to handle it, you may think you're not equipped for it. I'm here to tell you when I look at that, and I know in my mind that that animal cannot do it, but when I look at it being done, I know that God is able, and if he's able to do it for this animal, he's able to do it for me. I want you to drink that picture in because when something comes to you that looks impossible it's no way God I just I don't see it I don't see how and God is telling you I've equipped you I've equipped you to handle it I wouldn't put it on you if you couldn't handle it I wouldn't let you go there if you couldn't get victory so when you tell God I can't I, I can't fear has got you bound you can't you missing out on possibly the greatest victory, the greatest miracle that you could ever have in your life, then it'll let you know that no matter what comes your way, you're going to climb that thing and you're going to get over whatever it is you've got to get over, whatever the obstacle. Now, this animal doesn't know to speak to the mountain. God didn't equip them to speak to the mountain. He thought more of us that we could speak to the mountain and not even have to get up there. But if you find yourself in a place that looks like you can't tread through, if you find yourself in a place, God, I don't know where to step. I don't know what to do. You just got to begin by stepping. And God, if he sent you there, just begin to step. And God will show you that you've been equipped to handle anything that comes your way. This animal has blessed me. Look, just looking at the picture. He's not concerned about the danger. He knows there's danger. Yes, 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 yes. But he believes in the task. He believes in what he is equipped to do more than the danger. Yes. Do you believe in what you're equipped to do more than the danger, more than what people are going to say, more than how you're going to look? Are you realizing, understanding, Believing, more so knowing that you're equipped to handle everything that God allows to come your way. Pull it up online. I want you to pull it up and look at those more pictures. Well, there's many of them. 
with their babies on the side. And they're sitting there just unconcerned. Now, I couldn't see letting my baby go out there because I can't see me out there. But this animal is not worried about that. They're accomplishing the task because there's something out there that they want. They're not on there just to be on there. Oh, I have nothing to do. I'm just going to climb a mountain. I'm just going to climb a dam. But there's precious food that's coming and growing out of the rock that is worth it to them. It's worth everything that they have. It's worth losing their life to go after. If you realize that your life is not your own, if you realize that you have no life without God, that when God sends you to a place to get something precious that you can't get without going through some things, without pressing out and using the things that God gave you, you'll never attain it. You'll never have it. Are you willing to use the things that God has equipped you with? to go after the things he has sent to you. Those things, the, the, the things, the precious things that are out there that they are loving to eat yeah. are sitting out there. They will rot there if they don't get them. But they have taken the opportunity and accepted and said, I'm going. It doesn't matter. My life is better. If I get it, I got to have it. I'm going. I'm going to get that that God has prepared for me, even though I have to go through, even though I have to deal with some stuff, even though I have to face my fears. I'm going to keep moving to get that thing that God has for me. And when they got out there, they realize that, oh, there's some more. There's some more good things. There's some more I can get. It's not just one piece. Because once you get out there, you realize, oh, God has got more for me. There's more. And then you begin to get out there and scale that wall and scale that dam, amen, just like this animal, and not worry about the danger because the reward is better than the danger. The reward is more than anything you'd have to face. When we realize that, when we understand that, we won't mind stepping out. We won't mind going out into the high places to get the things that God has for us like this animal. Amen? Amen. Put your hands together for the blessing of the Lord. Pastor T, that's what God gave me. We go through a lot, we deal with a lot, but if you're not willing to go, if you're not willing to roll with it, if you're not willing to use what God has for you, you'll never get the reward. Because what they're getting in coming out of that mountain is better than anything they could get down here in the valley. So we got to understand sometimes you got to get out your comfort zone. You got to get out of what you see is safe and rest in the arms of our Lord. Amen. Amen. The doors of the church are open. Amen. Amen. God bless you. The just shall live by faith. The just, those that understand that God's got an investment in you, live by faith, not by what they see. Seeing it is not faith. Knowing everything is not faith. Faith is stepping out there and knowing that God has your back because that's what he told you to do. No matter what comes, no matter what happens, that's faith. If you got to know everything, you're not walking by faith. If you got to know everything before you move, that's not faith. Trust God. Hallelujah. The doors of the church are open. Amen. We praise God for all of you here. Today we understand that Jesus is the only reason that we're able to be here and even understand the word that God has sent to this house today. The blood that he shed on Calvary for our sins, he didn't shed it for himself. He didn't go to the cross for himself. 
but he went to the cross for us because we had sinned to the point there was no redemption. There was nothing that we could do to bridge the gap that sin had so completely broken between us and our creator. But Jesus, the willing vessel, came and offered himself as a sacrificial lamb. To God, if they have to be punished, if they have to pay for their sins, I'll take it. I'll accept it. Don't let them do it. And if they receive me, all is forgiven. They don't have to go through this suffering. I'll do it for the entire world, all creation. And he allowed himself to be in that position. He allowed himself to be pierced in the side. He allowed himself to have the crown of thorns placed on his head. He gave up his life for us. He hung his head once the work was finished, once everyone's soul could be saved, once everyone everything was sealed and everyone would have the opportunity to receive Jesus to be able to go to heaven all you have to do is confess the Lord once all of that was done he said it's finished and he's hung his head and died and on the third day he rose with all power in his hands to let death know you cannot have them either when they die they don't stay with you but they're able to live with the Father for all eternity. And so in this opportunity, we want to extend even those that may be listening by social media to understand that there are some things that are going on that seem impossible, that seem so hard. But that's because you're trying to do it yourself. And when you understand that Jesus is the only way, Jesus is the only way that you'll ever have joy, you'll ever have true peace. He is the only way to heaven. Until you make that confession, you cannot be saved. So we encourage you today to pray that Jesus receives, hallelujah, your confession that God will accept your humble heart as you confess that he is Lord and ask him to come into your heart to make you clean repent of your sins and say Lord I've done wrong I don't even know how to tell you everything that I've done wrong but God knows everything that you've ever done right and that you've ever done wrong and by your confession your heartfelt confession he will receive your petition. And just that simply, you can be saved. Amen. Once you make that confession, get into a Bible-based church. Amen. And begin to learn how this walk with Jesus can make you feel so good. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You may take your seats. Amen. But don't let the opportunity, when you feel something pulling on you, that's the Holy Spirit. When you feel that there's something that's pushing you to do better, that's the Holy Spirit. And we thank God for the Holy Spirit. Amen. We praise God for his message today. We praise God for him wanting us to be better. We praise God for him allowing us the opportunity. And God, we just thank you that you've kept us and you've blessed us. God, you know, even in the prayers before this service, God, that, hallelujah, what was requested, what was asked, and God, we thank you for allowing us to sow. We thank you for ministering that word, God, through me. And God, we ask you in the name of Jesus, hallelujah, God, to allow this word not to fall, but allow this word to live in the hearts of and the minds and the lives of others so to the point that they will share hallelujah that there is hope there is hope for your trouble that your trouble is not the end of your story so God we just thank you for the blessing and we honor you in Jesus name amen 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 as pastors right now ministering amen 
to Sister Carla. Amen. We want to thank God. Amen. Now that word bless me. Amen. If you ever wonder what does she talk about, pull up that picture and let it minister to you. Amen. And you'll find that what it is that you're facing is, is, is until you trust God with it. God knows it all. He knows the end of it. That until you trust him, you're going to have a hard way to go. But you've got to trust God and let God have it. Amen? And watch how your life will soar. Watch how things will just get better. Because your life, whether we believe it or not, your life is in God's hands. Every situation you go through is in God's hands. So as he created this animal, amen, to be able to scale in the dangerous places, he's created you to fulfill everything that he's sent you to the earth to do, amen. So we thank God, amen. We bless God. Hallelujah. 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 Are there any announcements or anything before we make preparation? We're ahead of, we're ahead of schedule today, amen. So we thank God, amen. Deacons, is there anything that we're missing? Amen. I want to thank everyone for coming together for Brother Chris yesterday. Amen. In his homegoing celebration. Amen. I want to thank the A team for extending themselves. Amen. And going down and helping them, helping the family with the food and all of you who showed up yesterday to honor one of our own. It was such a great blessing. Amen. We will miss him. I miss him right now. Hallelujah. But now it is my task to see him again. Amen. And there's only one way, and that's through Jesus, that I'll see him again. And I'm looking forward to it. Amen. He's up there with, with my daddy, John. Amen. And Deacon Johnson up there looking around the corner. Amen. Checking it out. Amen. Amen. So what we're going to do is rejoice in the fact that we will see him again. Amen. It was better for us that Chris be here, but it was better for Chris that he leave here. Amen. And I'm not upset about that. Amen. Because one day we'll all leave here. And I'm waiting on Jesus. Hallelujah. To come back and get me. Amen. Amen. Pastor, is there anything further? Amen. Let's give Sister Tony a great big hand. Well delivered message. The just shall live by faith. Now I don't know exactly what kind of animal that was in the in the idea of a of a deer, but now that was faith. Good God Almighty. When I looked at it, it kind of made me a little, you know, I ain't no, I ain't the blessed person when it comes to height. I was telling somebody the other day, the Bible said, and lo, I'll be with you always. Amen. Oh, my God. Well, that was faith. <laughs> oh, my God. Listen, I want to take this opportunity to thank you all. This month has been, I mean, extraordinary. And I, I've gotten a lot of rest. Uh, I did, and I've, I've been able to reflect and just really and, 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 and enjoy and do some things. And, and I, I really appreciate the time that y'all gave me away from the pulpit. And uh, some say, well, we thought you were going somewhere. No, I just wanted to kind of get revived. The revival more, for, more so for the pastor than anybody else pull back into me so I have I have been revived my spirit has and, and I've gotten some rest and I thank you all for that it has been
down dinner. We are um, looking forward to uh, making memories and creating lasting uh, memories that you will share with your family for years to come, having opportunity to celebrate our legacy. Our legacy is our gifts. Those are gifts from God. So we are um, delighted to be able to establish this first one, and we're hoping that you will all participate, bring out your legacy, your children, and your children's children, and um, Sister Donna, if you will stand, she is going to take reservations, um, because it will be a cater event, we do have to adhere to some numbers, and with amidst COVID, um, we're asking that you would go ahead and sign up, so go ahead and start making your plans, get with Sister Donna, we're going to need first and last names of everyone, because everyone will be seated, we're going to sit families together, um, so that we are recognizing COVID and that we are keeping with the um, protocol that we need to, thank you, the protocol that we need to uh, have in place in order to make it a special, special occasion. And uh, the committee will be meeting next Sunday so that we can start to finalize some, some things. So if you have um, a desire and you want to come out, please get with Sister Donna, give her your names so that we can go ahead and make preparations. I promise you, you want to be there. And, and, and some of the things that I uh, um, want to bring out is I would like to see, um, especially these young girls, um, come out. she dance with anybody else. Amen. Amen. Let him let him set the standard for her. I want to see Chloe dance with Minister Dwight long before she dance with anybody else. Let her father set the standard. And then I even want to see Cody dance with Brandy. I want him to do that long before he dance with anybody else. We want to give these adults a chance, a chance to, you know, the first time, you know, one of the things I've been saying, and, and, and her father's heard me say it, and because I watch them, and I watch them develop, and uh, I don't want Chloe, the first time she hears she's beautiful, to hear it from somebody who don't have the right motive. So I've been telling Chloe, Chloe the last two or three weeks, and, and, and she just, it embarrasses her. I said, Chloe don't know she's beautiful. That's what I've been telling her. Her dad's heard me. I said, Chloe, she don't have a clue. She don't. And But the but worst thing that can happen, she, for her to hear it, not from somebody who has a pure heart about it. I'm just talking about what I'm talking about now. For her to hear it from somebody who has a motive. Because she don't. She, she don't. She, 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 I remember the first time I saw her, she came in with earrings on. I said, Chloe, no, she's a little girl. She don't. They, they, they began, they don't need to hear it the first time. They don't need to go out the first time. They don't need that. They need to be escorted by their father. They need to be escorted by their mother and set the standards. So that, that and that's what we're going to do. We're going to do some things, and, and I hope Miss Jackie deal with etiquette because we want you. We want to do that. We, we're working with even TJ on that right now, Tony and I, we got our hands full, uh, but we're working, we working with uh, TJ on some of those things, and that's what we want. We want the, these young people to, to, to do this. There will be a photographer there, um, because we it's, it's legacy, it's memory. We want you all to always remember it. That's going to be um, uh, other, you're going to hear more about it. I heard Miss Jackie's got a lot of, um, of uh, things in mind. Uh, uh, about what we're going to do, but it is going to be extremely nice, and we want this to be something that we look forward to every year, and uh, because of certain situations, we were trying to get it done, and got, kept got, get put off because of everything's going on. I don't know if it's always going to be in the month of December. We'll work that out, but right now, that's the only time we had that we could put it together. So we're excited about that, and um, we want you all to, to be uh that this is going to be legacy and this is the, the father
the son, the, the excuse me, the father, daughter, the uh, the mother, son, and that's why we're calling it the legacy. Um, there will be no there will be no cost, even even if I can work it out with a photographer. I don't, I don't even think we're going to charge for that. I think we're going to take care of everything, and uh, so that even the pictures and, and things that you share, everything is going to be taken care of. So that's what we. That's our goal, and I think she's going to have uh, some live music as well. Um, I've, I've been hearing about that, um, but you're going to enjoy this. Pastor T has chosen the book. Let me tell y'all something. I remember a couple years ago when 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 I was a lot younger. So this this this, this particular day, I got through preaching, and I and I used to do the moonwalk. Donna, then I used to do the moonwalk. Oh. So now, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. If you want to see Pastor T do the moonwalk, you got to come. So, so this particular day, I did the moonwalk, did some other stuff. Coming down, Sister Brown going to meet me over here tomorrow. I believe you used to cut the rug. I said, what you mean used to? I saw you get, I believe you used to cut the rug. I said, what you mean you used to? Y'all want to see Pastor do move up? Better come. Sherry got something she wants to share. Sherry, would you come? This is, this is something else that we, we're going to be um, kind of um, hosting and sponsoring. It's, 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 a, it's a blessing. Good morning, church family. I just want to give you guys an update. Um, we have the opportunity, when I say we, um, the Madison Morgan Community Food Pantry, that is the food pantry that was birthed out of the Minister's Union through our church and area churches. So we are doing well at the, um, we're, we're actually located at the former, or the original, the original middle school. And we continue to give out boxes every single week. Um, we gave out 128 yesterday, including the ones that we had 28 to go out in delivery. Um, so I just want you guys to know the mission, our food ministry is, is doing well and continuing to serve our community. Um, we have had a community Thanksgiving for many, many years. Um, it, it was done by the NAACP. Um, Cabri has hosted it for many years. And last year it was canceled due to COVID, and this year it was on the verge of cancellation as well. But um, with the blessings of Calvary, the Madison Community Food Pantry has picked that up. And we will continue to have um, a community Thanksgiving. It's just gonna be in a slightly different format. Um, we are going to only have delivery and pickup. It's not gonna be a dine-in um, accommodations. Um, for COVID and safety of our volunteers and our community. Um, you guys know the story very well where the men, where, where they knew Jesus was gonna be there and the men lowered their friend down um, through the roof, okay? So um, I look at that as we're either the friend on the cart or we're the friend on the four corners of that cart. So wherever we are in life, um, we need to be there for our community and be there for our friends. So we have an opportunity for Thanksgiving um, to be there for our friends. If you know someone that could benefit from having a Thanksgiving meal, when I think about Thanksgiving, I think about the traditions that I have with my family. I'm very blessed. I ain't got to cook meth. When I tell you, <laughs> amen, preacher, we ain't got to cook meth in the food. Yes. We'll burn, burn some smoke links. Okay. But 
the traditions that we have with our family where we have a meal and we've got the opportunity to fellowship with others, everybody is not blessed in that respect. And I feel like it's an obligation that we are there for our friends and our family to make sure that they have a good, nutritious meal on Thanksgiving, on Thanksgiving Day. So we've arranged, I've talked with um, our restaurants in our community, and they are going to prepare the dishes. We've got certain restaurants that's going to prepare one dish. So we've got a whole menu of items that our community is going to prepare. And we're going to meet with Hallie. I have a friend named Hallie Jane. She is a local caterer in the area. She and I are going to work together. Um, I, I'm not going to say I know when, my way around the kitchen. I, I'm not going to say that, but she does. And so um, it's, it's always important to have people around you that know how to do stuff. So I'm blessed to have people around me. I'm a logistics. I'm, I'm a person that structured and I can do all of that stuff, but I don't know my way around the kitchen, like my mama and like Sister Tom. Um, but I have a friend that does. And so she and I are partnering together and we're, we've got a menu um, and we're gonna bless the community. And, and what I need you guys to do is I need you to tell me those people that you know that could benefit from a meal and I need you to volunteer. So we're going to have volunteers on the Wednesday before um, to receive the food from our restaurants. They're probably going to be closed on Thanksgiving, so we're going to have to receive the food. Um, and then we're going to be firing up and cooking the food that they prepare on um, Thursday morning because we want, I want them to have something that's fresh, something that's good, something that's delicious, not several days old. So we're going to make sure that um, we will have volunteers there to do that, to plate the meals, and to deliver the meals. There is an opportunity for everyone that wants to participate to participate. Um, and then donations. I know our church is going to give, but if you want to give, um, you can give to, through our church and just say Community Thanksgiving um, 2021. It is another goal of ours if we have the money to provide toiletries. Um, we have a homeless community that lives in our hotels. We want to make sure that we bless them with food and then with toiletries. Um, fresh towels, um, fresh hand towels, you would be surprised what people need. So if you want to buy those things, because some people get joy in buying things, I was one that just always wrote a check, but God changed my heart, and so I am what I consider a doer. I want to go and do. So there are people in the community that want to do, and there's people that just want to write a check. So however you feel like you want to be a part of this, join in and be a part of um, an opportunity to bless our friends and our neighbors. Very good. A lot going on, and let's, let's all of us really rally around this and make it happen. We're going to need van drivers to deliver, uh, you know, and what they haven't had their first official meeting, but in my mind, if, if we're in Rutledge, we know a lot of people in Rutledge, maybe we can deliver to Rutledge area, you know? So if, if we can get people to go ahead and sign up, who do they sign up with, Sherry? I did get that sheet. I got that. Okay, very good. I've got that. Okay, so let's work on that then. And we'll, we'll get that done. All right, very good. Back to you on that. Amen. Y'all ready to go? Amen. Amen. I want to thank everyone for those announcements. Amen. About the legacy celebration as well as the upcoming Thanksgiving dinner. May we all stand? Amen. hearts and minds with one accord. Father, we just thank you for this opportunity that you've given us today. Thank you for seeding into us, God. Thank you for encouraging us, God. Thank you for giving us a good example, Father God. We just ask
ask you in the name of Jesus to keep us as we leave this place, God. We pray that your peace and rest and prosperity rest on all those that are present today and even those who are unable to be here today. Father, we send a blessing out to them right now, God. Father, we just thank you for keeping us another Sunday. Thank you for a place we can come and unify in the spirit. Father, to lift your name and to worship you. And may the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and the sweet communion of his Holy Spirit. Father, we pray right now that that spirit will be with us as we make choices in our life. Be with us as we face challenges. Be with us to guide, govern, and comfort us, God. We pray that the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit, Father, will speak into our ear and into our spirit so that we can encourage other people, God. So, Father, we just thank you and ask you right now, Lord, to allow this to saturate over us, oh God. And we pray that you will present us, God, faultless before the throne of grace with exceeding joy, God. That it will be a joy to present us, oh God. It will be a joy because you have found favor in us and said, servant of God, well done. God, we thank you. In Jesus' name. We ask and we pray and let every heart sing. Amen. Amen. God bless you. God keep you. And as Pastor T tells us, we love you. Shalom.